court has heard the witnesses and the overwhelming evidence against this unfortunate woman. It has heard the accused plea that she acted on a mad impulse, that she did not intend to commit a crime. Perhaps it was on impulse, in a moment of indiscretion. But this does not constitute a defense. We are all of us, at some time or another, the subjects of a temptation. A temptation we do and we must resist. A temptation this unfortunate woman was unable to resist. And she must pay the price of her own weakness. So, members of the jury, I ask that you bring in a verdict of guilty, which I submit is the only course open to you. Members of the jury, after hearing all the evidence presented in this court, I can only suggest to you that you bring in a verdict of guilty. Well, I must say, I'm glad that's over, Brian. So my brother-in-law, John Miller, triumphs yet again. Triumphs? Oh, I just bring out the facts in the case. Oh, your fourth successful prosecution in a row. Well, you know, they were all guilty. No, this one was in the balance. The woman looked pathetic. I don't need even money that she'd get off until your final speech. I think it was fair, Brian, don't you? You know, I shouldn't be surprised if some people have an eye on you. What do you mean, some people? You should think about taking silk. You'd make a fine QC. Oh, go on, Brian. I haven't got time to stand here and listen to your eulogies. Well, come and have a drink. Mm -mm. No, I promised Janet I'd be home early. Well, you tell that sister of mine it's high time she had lunch with me, eh? I will. Bye. Bye-bye, what? You earlier, dear. Well, dear, the jury took longer than I thought. How did the case go, anyway? Well, you got a conviction. Mm. Mm. Lovely perfume. Thank you. That means you won the case, then. Mm-hmm. Do you know, I, I don't think I can do it. <laughs> What's that? Tell my husband just how very proud I am of it. But I can give you a drink. Oh, now that's talking. Lovely. <laughs> Janet, do you realize it's only 2.30 and we've got the whole afternoon in front of us? What should we do? Well, you decide. Um, drive out somewhere? Fine. Where would you like to go? Well, I did promise I'd look Margaret up sometime. Oh, no. Not Margaret. Why not? Well, all I do is sit there and listen to you two old girls nattering about the things you used to do at school. Now, you know that's not true. And then there's that brother of hers. Jack, well, what's wrong with him? Nothing, except he always gets me in a corner, doesn't he, but asks questions about every case I've been on. Darling, you're being a bit unreasonable. All right. We'll go and see Margaret. Oh, no, we won't. Have you sitting there probably falling asleep? No, thank you. I'm sorry, darling. It'd be so nice just to be together for a change, Wayne. And I love you. I love you more than I can say. You know, you still haven't decided what we're going to do this afternoon. Well, let's stop at home, shall we? Yes, we'll relax and just be a couple of lazy birds. Mm, sounds fine. I'll put some slacks on. I'll mix us some more drinks. Oh, John. Mm -hmm. I forgot to tell you, a man called Tasker phoned this morning. Told me to remind you about today. Oh, heavens, yes. Well, what is it? I forgot to look at my appointment book. I completely forgot. Forgot? What? Mm, Martin Tasker. He's got a fraud case. I promised him I'd go through some papers with him today. Oh, must you go? I don't see how I can get out of it now. Never mind, darling. We'll start our afternoon together this evening. Forgive me. I understand, dear. But it shouldn't take long, a couple of hours at the most. I'll be back shortly after five. The sooner you leave, the sooner you'll be back. Oh, that's right. I'll just go up and sort some papers out, and I'll change at the same time. <laughs> Hello? Jerry? Yes, who is it? you want? Now, you know I told you not to call me. It was all over between you and me. It was all over two years ago when I married John. 
Janet, will you please let me explain? There's nothing to explain. Please hang up and... Now, Janet, please, don't hang up. Let me explain. I, I'm leaving the country. I... I've got a job abroad. I'm leaving tonight. If I make good, I won't be coming back, ever. Well, that's why I want to see you, to say goodbye. Look, I'd, I'd like to see you before you go, Eric, but it's impossible. You know the way John feels about you. Then don't tell him this time, Janet. I don't see how I can. Well, it's an innocent enough meeting. He loaned me a key once, and I've never returned it. Now, I know he's out working all day. Even he wouldn't know you were there. All right, what's the address? 14A, Charlton House, just off Finchley Road. I'll meet you there at 4 o'clock. Goodbye. Well, I think that's everything. Who's that you're talking to? Oh, my hairdresser. It's a nuisance my having to go out like this. Oh, I don't mind. I've just arranged to have my hair done. It'll help pass the time. Well, darling, can I give you a lift on my way to see Martin Tusk? Oh, no, thank you. My appointment's not till four. I'll take a taxi. All right, darling. Well, I'll see you later. Bye. I shouldn't be here. There's no harm in it, Janet. I'm so glad you came. Eric, this apartment, are you sure it's... His place belongs to a fellow named James Corby, a chap I met during the war. He works until six, as it's perfectly safe here. This man Corby, suppose no, he comes... He won't even know you've been here. Now, stop worrying, Janet. Well, it's good to see you again. You said you were going abroad. And so I am. The rest of my gear is on board already. But I didn't trick you into coming here. I'm flying to South America tonight. South America? Yes. Well, why don't you take your coat off and sit down? I'll tell you all about it. I can't stay long. Yes, I know that. Would you like a drink? No, thank you. It's been a long time, Janet. You're even more beautiful, if that were possible. You're going to tell me about South America? Oh, yes. Tristan Aquala. That's where I'm headed for. Tristan Aquala? <laughs> yes. Quite a, quite a mouthful, isn't it? Few people can pronounce it, even fewer people have ever heard of it. What are you going for? Well, an American company is financing me to take a team of natives beyond Tristan Aquala. We're going right into the interior to drill for oil. How long will that take? A year. Maybe two years. There's a big area to cover. But if I do strike oil, then I shall be staying out there for good to work the claim for the company. You won't be coming back? Maybe I won't come back, whatever happens. This country no longer holds anything for me, Janet. Don't say that, Eric, please. Well, how are you? How's John? Oh, we're fine. I've been reading about him in the papers. He's making quite a success, isn't he? He works hard for success. <laughs> Does he still pack that right hook? I wish you and he could have got on, but he's still very jealous of you, you know. He has a perfect right to resent my seeing you. He wanted to keep you all to himself, and I don't blame him. All the same, I wish he could have seen you before you left. You love him very much, don't you? Yes, Eric, very much. Well, if I had to lose you to anyone, I'm glad it was John. Thank you. Well, I'd better be going. Yes, me too. I've got quite a long trip ahead of me. I hope you find what you're looking for. 
I've already lost what I was looking for. We better not be seen leaving together. Somebody out there. Well, that's all right. They wouldn't know you from Adam. Oh, I'm not taking any chances. Well, let's just wait here till they go away. No, you go now and I'll stay here a few minutes and then I'll slip out. Okay. Thanks for coming, Janet. I should have hated to go without seeing you. Goodbye. Eric. Good luck. Oh, you again. I told you to stop bothering me. Now get out of here. J.M. Perfume, too. Good quality. Well, Doc. One thrust through the heart. One? Either very lucky or very skillful. Uh, would it have uh, taken much strength? Not if you knew just where to put the knife. Death would then be almost instantaneous. Instantaneous, eh? Could she have shouted or screamed before she died? Mm, maybe. I'll tell you more when I get her in the morgue. She was pretty. Yes, yeah, she's dead. That's all concerns me. Cheer, Doc. Goodbye. I'm going to have a look round in there. I'll question the occupants to get us. Right. See you back in the yard. Oh, Mr. Evans, I'd like a word with you, please. John, you were talking tonight about some of the cases you worked on before you met me. Uh-huh. Yeah. Were you ever on a murder trial? No, I was a um, junior counsel on one, then. What was it like? What was what like? The murder trial you worked on. Oh, I suppose the main thing I remember about it was the awful finality of it. 
Penality? Hmm. You see, most of the criminal cases I worked on, the defendants were fighting for their liberty. Well, this time, a man was fighting for his life. Was he found guilty? Oh, yes. Did you think he was guilty? Yes. People who stand in dock accused of murder generally are. Police don't often bring a charge unless they can be pretty sure of a conviction. This man, who did he kill? Oh, darling, I can't remember. It was ages ago. Good night, then. Good night. John. Mm -hmm. I suppose somebody saw a murder committed. Mm, suppose you go to sleep. No, please, John, I want to know something. Suppose someone saw a murder committed, saw the man who did it, and... and yet didn't go to the police. Of course they'd go to the police. Yes, but supposing they didn't, they, they couldn't for some reason. Well, they'd have to, darling. Now, be a good girl and go to sleep. Even if they didn't know who the murderer was, didn't know his name... Well, they'd have some kind of oh, description of him, wouldn't they? Yes, but if the description were a very vague one, say, of a man of average colouring, average build, around 30... Oh, it would still be a description. Not a very helpful one. Oh. Uh, uh, I'll let the police decide. John, there's something I must tell you. Any luck, Harry? We made a house-to-house -house inquiry of the area. Nobody was able to tell us anything relevant. Evans, the man who called us, lived in 14B on the upper landing. He came home shortly before five. A little later, he heard a scream and came out. The girl probably screamed before she died. Evans see anyone? He got a glimpse of a woman running down the stairs and said he wouldn't be able to recognize her. A woman? That ties in with this. Pity Evans didn't get a closer look. Doesn't help us much, really, does it? This might, if we could locate the owner. Maybe we will with this. Check on the stores. Yeah, this handkerchief's handmade. Look, see that stitching? That monogram wasn't put on by any machine. The dead girl, what do we know about her? You can see that for yourself. Vicky Drayton, age 26, eight stone five pounds, dark hair, resident of Charlton House for the past four months. Occupation, dancer. You get the dancer angle. She hasn't been on the stage for three years. She lived pretty well. Somebody leave us some money. Somebody left us some money, all right. Oh. Her boyfriend's bought her expensive presents from jewelers and dined her at the Ritz. How'd you find that out? <laughs> She's a girl about town. Photographs and clippings are on file. Well, it's 12 o'clock. Let's call it a day. <coughs> Tomorrow, we'll scour the West End. Somewhere, this was ordered for somebody. I want to find out where and for whom. You look so peaceful, I didn't want to disturb you. Besides, I didn't do too badly. It reminds me of my bachelor days. So I see. What? <laughs> Let me get you some fresh coffee. Well, I'm afraid I haven't got time. I've, I've got a busy day ahead. I must be off. Oh, by the way, I thought I'd get some theatre tickets for this evening. Would you like that? Lovely. Good. See you later, darling. Bye. Bye. to tell you how important this is. It's our only lead so far. Now, you've all got photostats. 
Maybe not as good as the original, but somebody might recognize it. We'll each select the constable and work in pairs. Okay? Any questions? Off you go. <laughs> Is ready, darling? Yes. Yes, Inspector. The lady said she recognized it. Of course, I don't know for sure if she. Right. The inspector's on his way here now. Last work, Inspector. We've had enough time in this case already. Where's the owner? Right over there. Mrs. Cartier? This is Inspector Marsh. Mrs. Yes. Cartier. Good afternoon, madam. I understand you've been able to identify a handkerchief as having been made here. I didn't say that exactly. I thought it could have been made here, but uh, very difficult. By photograph. I see. Well, perhaps this will help you. Oh. oh, yes. This is our work. You sure? Definitely. The monogram. The distinctive mark there. This work is done by hand, Inspector, and very individual. And exclusive to this store? Of course. If you want further proof, there's the material. Perhaps you think it looks like any other sort of white material, but the texture in it. It's Persian silk. Last year, we had just one bolt of it. I see. Well, then perhaps you could tell me from your records the name of the person who bought it. Oh, I shan't need to do that. But this was one of six made specially for Mrs. Miller, Mrs. Janet Miller. She's a regular customer of ours. Mrs. Janet Miller? Yes. See, well, then perhaps you could tell me her address, could you, from your records? Oh, yes. Inspector, there isn't anything wrong, is there? Oh, don't worry, madam. We're just hoping that Mrs. Miller might be able to help us with a case we're working on, that's all. Oh, I see. Afternoon off, I picked something very nice for lunch. Oh, it's lovely, darling. Would you like this? I bought it today. We've been married for two years, and yet you still surprise me. Why? Because I prefer dance music to Brahms. I wonder who that could be. I don't know. We weren't expecting anybody. You know, it's a funny thing. Whenever I get an afternoon off, we're always disturbed. <laughs> the 
somebody to see you, Janet. From Scotland Yard. The police? That's right, Mrs. Miller. I hope it didn't startle you. Oh, no. No, that's quite all right. Well, what can we do for you, Inspector? Well, that's with your wife I came to see, sir. Inspector Marsh, madam. This is Sergeant Field. How do you do, Inspector? Have I been breaking a traffic regulation or something? No, it's nothing like that. Um, may I sit down, please? Yes, please do, Inspector. Thank you so much. Now, oh, perhaps you'll tell us what this is all about. Well, I hope you're going to be able to help us, Mrs. Miller, on a case that we're investigating. I'll certainly try. Mm, thank you. Tell me, I wonder if you'd mind having a look at that and seeing if you recognize it. Yes, it belongs to me. You're quite sure about that? Quite sure. I've got several, and I, I recognize my perfume. I see. And this? Oh, yes, wait a minute. I think that's the... Yes, that's the duplicate key to our front door. Where'd you get it? We found it. So both these articles do belong to you, madam. Belonged, Inspector. I lost that key over a week ago. Oh, you lost the key? Yes, sir. I can only presume I lost the handkerchief at the same time. Could you be a little more explicit? Do you know exactly when you lost the key? No, I, I don't remember. Possibly in the street somewhere. Then perhaps you can tell us when you lost it. Yes, last Saturday. Are you sure? Quite sure. I see. Oh, now, look here, Inspector. What's the reason for all this mystery? And why are you asking so many questions? Yes, I think you're entitled to know. This key and that handkerchief were found four days ago in Charlton House, close to the body of Vicky Drayton. Are you trying to say that... Oh, but that's ridiculous. Is it? Well, are you trying to suggest that my wife is implicated in a murder? Your wife doesn't deny that these articles belong to her. Oh, really, Inspector, I have a high regard for the intelligence of Scotland Yard. Nevertheless, is... sir, these articles were found close to the body of Vicky Drayton. But she told you she lost them. Someone probably found them and took them to the scene of the crime. I mean, there are a dozen explanations as to how they got there. Well, if you don't mind, sir, I'd like to hear your wife's. But she's already told you. Mrs. Miller, where were you last Wednesday at 5 p.m.? I don't remember. Janet, of course you do. She went to the hairdressers. Well, don't you remember I went to see Martin Tasker and you went to the hairdressers? Is that correct, Mrs. Miller? Well, of course it's correct. Is that correct, Mrs. Miller? Well, I... Oh, let's put an end to all this nonsense. Janet, what's the telephone number of your hairdressers? Then perhaps you'll be satisfied when they confirm that she was there on Wednesday afternoon. That would be conclusive, sir. Oh, well, Janet, darling, what's the number? <laughs> Janet. No, I wasn't at the hairdressers that day. I was at Charlton House. I was there when that girl was murdered. I saw everything. I wanted to tell you, John. I lied to you. Janet, darling, you can't All the time it. I wanted to tell you, I tried to tell you, but I was so afraid of what you'd say about Eric. Eric? What's Eric to do with you? I went to see him to say goodbye. I knew you wouldn't understand. I, I didn't want to hurt you, knowing how you feel about him. Mrs. Miller. I think you'd better tell us the whole truth about what happened. Oh, Inspector, you can see she's upset. Can't no, John, wait? I want to. Uh, I want to tell him the whole truth. Then tell us exactly what happened. Janet, you don't have to tell him anything. But I must. I've lived with this for four days already. Last Wednesday afternoon, my husband had to go out on business, and I had a call from Eric Stanton. Who's he? He's my wife's ex fiance He said he was going abroad, probably never coming back, and... He wanted to see me to say goodbye before he left. I agreed. Why didn't you tell me? I didn't think you'd understand. You see, John and Eric had had arguments over me in the past. I, I promised John I'd never see Eric again. That's why I didn't mention it. It was a perfectly innocent meeting. I was only going to say goodbye. So you met this man Stanton. Where was that, at his place? No. I'd met him at his place last year on his birthday. John found out about it. We know other people who live there. Well, where'd you meet him this time? He said he had the key to a friend's apartment. Number 14A, Charlton House. I met him there. We talked for about 20 minutes and then Eric left. A few minutes later, I followed. Stanton left first? Yes, sir. There was a man in the hall outside. I didn't want to be seen. Go on, Mrs. Miller. I started to walk down the stairs. It was late afternoon and there were no lights on. Then I heard somebody knocking at the door below me. I stopped on the stairs, hoping they'd go. Yes? I could see a man 
standing outside Vicky Drayton's door. Then the door opened. She said something about not to come bothering her again, and, and then he stabbed her. You actually saw a man stab Vicky Drayton? She didn't cry out or anything. She, she just slowly slid to the floor. It was horrible. Mrs. Miller, did you get a good look at this man? It was dim, and his back was towards me most of the time, but he, he crouched over the body for a moment, and, and then I saw his face. You saw his face? Would you recognize it again? I'll never forget it. You say this man crouched over the body. Then what did he do? Well, he just ran down the stairs. I, I stood there, too scared to move, just listening to his footsteps as he ran down the stairs. And what did you do then? I was dazed. My mind wouldn't function properly. I, I walked down the stairs towards the dead girl. I, I may have touched her. I, I don't remember. All I knew was that I had to get out of that place. I, I screamed and panicked and ran. That must have been when I dropped these. I see. Now, this man, do you think you could give us a description of him? Yes. Yes, I can. He was about average height, with brown hair, wearing a light overcoat and a, a grey suit, as far as I could see. How would you describe his build? Oh, average, neither... Thin nor fat. Anything about his face you remember? Um, thinnish, straight nose, good features. Mm. Not a very good description, I'm afraid. Could fit any one of a million men. I'm sorry. That's what he looked like. Tell me, Mrs. Miller, how many times have you been to Charlton House? Well, just once, as I told I you. I see, and you arrived about 4.30. Yes. And you stayed 20 minutes. Yes. So you saw Vicky being killed about 4.50. Yes. We have evidence which indicates she was killed at 5.15. 5.15, 4.50, I can't be absolutely sure. I... Tell me, Mrs. Miller, how well did you know the dead girl? I didn't know her at all. The day she was murdered, that was the first time you saw her? It's the only time I saw her. Now, wait a minute, Inspector. What are you driving at? I'm trying to get the facts, that's all, sir. My wife has already told you exactly what happened. Oh, yes, she's told us. Well, I don't think I like your tone. And I don't like murder, Mr. Miller. Oh, what do you mean by that? I mean that your wife has just told us an unverified story. Unverified? Well, she just told you she saw the murder committed. She saw the man who did it. She says she saw the man who did it. Average build, height and colouring. But are you suggesting that my wife's lying? I'm suggesting nothing. I'm trying to get at the facts. You're a lawyer, Mr. Miller. You know the importance of correct facts. Oh, yes, yes. And what are the facts? Your wife witnesses a murder. She sees a girl killed and does nothing about it. She comes home and says nothing. But she's already explained that. She didn't, she didn't want... want you to know that she was meeting her ex-fiance. But how do we know that she went to Charlton House to meet this man, Stanton? Well, do you think she invented the whole story? She could have. She's had four whole days to think it over. Oh, really? You must be crazy. Am I? Vicky Drayton was killed at 5.15. The man on the floor above heard a scream. But that was me. I was the one who screamed. Can you prove that? The man above saw a woman running downstairs. He came down after her and found Vicky Drayton's body. She's been dead for seconds. But surely you Two can't... people who worked their child at house saw a well-dressed woman hurriedly leaving the block. But I was frightened. Your I handkerchief and key were found next to Vicky Drayton's body. Oh, really, Inspector? The whole thing is purely circumstantial. Circumstantial, maybe, but far more concrete than the story your wife has told us. But I didn't even know her. Why should I want to kill a girl I didn't even know? Maybe you did know her, Mrs. Miller. Now, look, Inspector, my wife is telling the truth. Truth? She didn't tell you the truth about this handkerchief, did she? Or about the key or the murder? No, you but call she... that truth? No, but she's telling the truth now. I'd know if Janet were lying. Would you? You believed her last Wednesday, didn't you, when she said she was going to the hairdressers? Well, there's one sure way to find that out. Janet, this apartment where you met Eric, you said it belonged to a friend of his. Now, if this friend confirms that Eric was there, that gives Janet every reason for being at Charlton House. It would make the rest of the story more credible. Tell me, Mrs. Miller, this friend of Stanton's, what was his name? I... I don't remember, but it was apartment 14A. 14A, a Mr. James Corby. Yes, that's it, Corby. Right, well, I'll get in touch with Mr. Corby. I'll make an appointment for us all to meet at Charlton House at 5 o'clock. If it's not satisfactory, Mr. Corby, I'll let you know, right? Very well, we'll be there at 5. Thank you.
Say it, darling. Why didn't you tell me all about this before? I don't know. Just don't know. Let you see, darling, that hiding the truth about a murder, well, it's... It... I'd broken my promise to you about Erica. I felt so guilty. John. Erica and I, we only wanted to say goodbye. You, you do believe there was nothing else. Yes, of course, darling. No, don't worry. I'll see you through this. As soon as we can find this man, Corby. John, there's something else. I've seen Vicky Drayton before. Oh, where? Last month, when I was collecting for the orphan's aid, Charlton House was on my list. But why didn't you tell Inspector Marsh about this? Oh, I was frightened. I wanted to tell you first. Well, now, look, Janet, please don't say anything about knowing Vicky Drayton. Don't mention it. You understand? Who was it that said, Oh, what a tangled web we weave when first we practice to deceive? All right, Mr. Corby. We'll see you at five, then. Thanks very much. Goodbye. What's Evans' number? Everglade, 4651. What do you think, Harry? Mrs. Miller's story was clumsy. Only people who make a habit of lying are really smooth at it. Yeah. And Miller's so used to hearing her stories, he believes everything she says. Mr. Evans? Yes? Oh, this is Inspector Marsh speaking. Mr. Evans, Sergeant Field and I will be at Mr. Corbett's apartment this afternoon about five with a man and a woman. I wonder if you could be in the hallway about that time to have a look at the woman. What for, Inspector? Well, to see if by any chance you recognize her as the woman who ran downstairs after the Drayton murder. You know, I only got a glimpse of her. It won't do any harm to try, will it? All right, Inspector. Well, thanks, Mr. Evans. Goodbye. You're working too hard. You know, all work and no play make Jack a dull boy. That's a very good alibi for Jack, but it won't do for me. Come on. Uh, you coming to see me? Uh, no, thank you. Not yet. I'll see you later on. Be glad to do anything to help. Come in. Good afternoon, Mr. Corbin. Maybe you'll come in. Oh, yes, please do, Inspector. Okay. What can I do for you, Inspector? It's about this young woman, Mrs. Miller. Mrs. Miller? That's him. That's the man. The man I saw kill Vicky Drayton. Sorry, Don't come near me. Don't touch you. Janet. Janet. You better take her home. I'll be along later. <laughs> well, Inspector. Quite a touch of melodrama. Yes. Yeah. Cigarette? No, thank you. Mrs. Miller says she saw Vicky Drayton murdered. Yes, so I gathered. Do you believe her? Well, she seemed to recognize you all right. Well, so she should. She's seen me before. Seen you before? When? Oh, I passed her on the stairs about a month ago. You passed her on the stairs? Yes, she was downstairs talking to Vicky Drayton. Are you sure it's the same woman? I'm quite sure, Inspector. You see, I had occasion to remember. They were, well, talking rather loudly. Say what you mean, Mr. Corbett. Inspector, I don't want to get an innocent person into trouble. No innocent person will get into trouble. Well, Miss Drayton and Mrs. Miller were, were quarreling. I see. Now relax, darling. Where is he? Who? That man, Corby. He's with the inspector. You're home now, darling. You've let the events of the day get you down. John, it was him. It was the same man. The same? You really meant what you said? Well, of course I meant it. I'd recognize him anywhere. But are you sure, Janet? Absolutely sure? Yes. He was the man who killed Vicky Drayton. Jenny. 
Hey, darling, surely you must be mistaken. Not this time. But you've already told me the hallway was dark. How could you be sure? John, I tell you, I saw the killer's face and he and that man were the same person. Now listen, Inspector. My wife wasn't being hysterical. She really did see Corby kill Vicky Drayton. Your wife saw no one kill Vicky Drayton. What do you mean? James Corby says that no one has used his apartment without his knowledge. Well, of course he'd say that. What's more, he's made a positive identification. He says that just over a month ago, you were quarreling with Vicky Drayton. But that's impossible. I didn't even know her. But we can explain my wife seeing Vicky Drayton. Then she does admit she knows her. No, she didn't know her. She saw her for the first time at Charlton House last month, and then not again until the day of the murder. And I wasn't quarreling with her. She was opposed to a charity I was collecting for, and she was shouting at me. I'd asked Mr. Evans, who lives across from Corby, if he could identify you as the woman who ran downstairs on the day of the murder. But what on earth for? She already admits to being there. He couldn't. He only caught a glimpse. Nevertheless, you were quarrelling with Vicky Drayton a month ago. Oh, well, that's only Corby's word against my wife's. No. Evans confirms Corby's statement. What do you mean? Evans heard a noise that day, just over a month ago, and he came out in the hall to investigate it. He positively identifies you as the woman who was quarreling with Miss Drayton. I wasn't. Janet Miller, I'm arresting you for the murder of Vicky Drayton. You're not obliged to say anything in answer to the charge. Anything you do say will be taken down and may be given in evidence. on Queen Street. Fatal? Yes. Fill in an IV-7. Inspector, you haven't got enough evidence to charge my wife with murder. You know better than that, Mr. Miller. Fill in these forms, will you, Mrs. Janet Miller, to be held on a charge of murder. You're not going to get away with this. We're not trying to get away with anything, Mr. Miller. Merely trying to do our job. Any statements attached, sir? I'll send the statements down later. Let me have the copies, will you? Anything further I can do for you, Mr. Miller? Yes. What are you going to do about Corby? Surely after what Janet said, you're going to check on him? We check everything thoroughly. You send a police woman down and check Mrs. Miller's personal belongings, please. Well, has Corby got an alibi for the time of the murder? You'll have to sign this, sir. Corby's a photographer. He's got a studio in town, and he was there at the time. Was he alone? No, he had a model with him. Well, have you checked that? I've spoken to her on the telephone. Corby's alibi stands. The model confirmed it. Furthermore, he didn't know Vicky Drayton. Neither did my wife. Can I do anything else for you, Mr. Miller? Yes, what possible connection do you think existed between Vicky Drayton and my wife? I mean, what motive could Janet have had? Vicky Drayton knew a lot of men. So? So, perhaps she knew one in whom your wife was particularly interested. No! Today's been a very great shock for you, sir. You're upset and I'm not responsible for your actions. Nobody saw what happened here just now. I shall forget it did happen. I suggest you go home and get some rest. I'd like to see my wife before. Take him down. She's a very pretty woman. Enough to make any man desperate. John! John, can this really be happening to me? But don't worry, darling. Everything's going to be all right. I promise you. How long am I going to have to stay here? How long? Jenny, darling, we must try and face things sensibly. You see, legally, they could hold you here until the trial. Oh, no. Oh. Darling, I promise you, I'm going to do everything in my power to prove your innocence. John, you do believe I'm innocent. Well, tell me, you do believe that. Of course I do, darling. Please, you must try. You must try and be calm. I told you everything. You know it all now, and it's the truth. If only I told you the truth at first. Oh, never mind that. We can forget about that now. Look, I want to ask you something. How could Corby have seen you talking to Vicky Drayton last month? You said you saw no one in the building. You must believe me. You know I do. If only the 
police had. Yes, well, the police like to tie up the case as quickly as they can. Only they believed I was in Corby's apartment. Well, perhaps they will when they locate Eric Stanton. John, when I was in Corby's apartment, Eric gave me a cigarette. Yes. Stubb had lipstick on it, and I didn't want to leave it lying around. Well? There was a flower pot by the window. I buried the stub in the earth. Now then, Nell, did you approach this man? No, he spoke to me. What did he want? Oh, wanted to know the time. Funny the number of men in London who don't know the time. Right up. Come along. Is Inspector Marsh still here? I think he is. Well, I've got to see him. Where is he? Through there. Thank you. These papers go to the public prosecutor first thing in the morning. It's been a long day. Let's get out of here. Come in. Mr. Miller insists on seeing you, sir. Oh, no. Well, Mr. Miller? You didn't believe a word of my wife's story, did you? No, I didn't. Oh, well, perhaps I can make you change your mind. I'd like to show you something that may convince you that Janet was telling the truth. What is it? This. A cigarette stub? Yes, I found it in Corby's apartment 15 minutes ago. Janet left you there the day she met Eric Stanton. It was in exactly the place she described, among the roots of a plant. Well, how else would she have known that I would have found her cigarette end with lipstick marks on it buried in a flower pot if she hadn't been there before? It proves that part of her story is true. Did Corby or anyone else see you find that? No. Surely you, of all people, must realize that an old cigarette stub, which could have been obtained anywhere, will hardly stand up in a court of law as a piece of evidence. I realize that, Inspector, and I'm not presenting as evidence of anything save the fact that Janet was telling the truth, that perhaps her allegation against Corby is correct. I'm sorry, Mr. Miller. You're sorry. Look, even if she was in Corby's apartment, it doesn't prove a thing. She still had time and opportunity to kill Vicky Drayton. Maybe Eric Stanton was part of an elaborate alibi that misfired. Well, Eric Stanton will soon disprove all that. He won't be able to help much. Why not? Mr. Miller, as a barrister, I understand you're not allowed to defend your own wife. Yes, that is correct, but I'm briefing somebody else who will, and I'm going to assist him. Well, as long as you're here in an official capacity, then I can show you this. What is it? Cable from the Peruvian police. Eric Stanton arrived in Tristan Aquila on Thursday, took off into the jungle Friday morning. What does that mean? It means that there's no way of communicating with him. It may be six months or even a year before anyone can get in touch with Eric Stanton again. I've just read the morning paper. Is it true? Yes, I'm afraid it is. I don't understand. What happened? Oh, some circumstantial evidence and Janet is charged with murder. Oh, it's fantastic. Hello, John Miller speaking. I'm afraid I can't make any statements today. I've been telephone calls all morning and three reporters at the door already. Now, John, for heaven's sake. Yes, and Wyatt's pulled me off his libel action, task has ducked out of the fraud case and probably more to come. Oh, that's terrible, but things are even worse for Janet. Yes, you're right there. I don't think I slept at all last night. You know, there must be some way of pinning this man Corby down. Corby's the man who identified Janet. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think he did see Janet, but that he was inside Vicky Drayton's room at the time. Mm. Saying it's one thing, proving it's another. Yes, I know. Brown, would, would you mind defending Janet? You know I can't do it legally, but I'd like to assist you. Yes, of course. Thanks, old boy. Now, look, come here and I'll explain some of the points of the case to you. Mm -hmm. The thing is that... One more. Hold it. Smile. That'll do. Is that all, Jim? That's all for now, thank you, sweetie. Go and change and we'll go get something to eat. So, a Mrs. Miller murdered Vicky Drayton last Wednesday at 5 p.m. And my star model was right here when it happened, wasn't she? She says she was. Why, Jim? Why did you want me to say that? I've told you, sweetie. 
Vicky Drayton lived in the same apartment building as I did. I knew her a little. How well? Oh, I told you that, too. I want you to tell me again. All right. Just enough to say good morning or good evening to when I passed her in the hallway. But if you even know somebody who's been murdered, your life isn't your own with the police. So you tell the police you don't know her and make up an alibi for the time of the murder. You're smart, Jim. And you're beautiful, sweetie. You'll stick to your story, won't you? The police haven't got a chance to make me change it. Jim, do you really think Mrs. Miller did it? I mean, did you actually see her quarrelling with Vicky Drayton? You have the facts right there in your hands, sweetie. She doesn't look as though she could have done it. Still, that's life. The person you least suspect. Be ready in a few minutes. Mr. John Miller to see you, Mr. Clayton. Oh, uh, show him in, would you, Peter? Yes, sir. Will you come in, sir? Oh, how are you, Miller? Mr. Clayton. Uh, do sit down. Thank you. Well, I'm sorry about all this. Yes, yes. The papers on Mrs. Miller's case were handed to me this morning. I've just been looking through them. Well, Mr. Clayton, I can tell you I never expected to visit you under these circumstances. I understand that you're prosecuting. Yes. What did you want to discuss with me, Miller? Oh, well, I, I wanted to have access to certain relevant papers. I'd like to discuss with you certain aspects of the case. <laughs> Miller, we've been on cases before. Don't turn layman on me. You know, I, I can't discuss this case off the record. Well, yes, yes, I quite understand that, but I thought possibly I might see some of the papers. I'll have copies made of all the papers that you and your barrister are entitled to see and have them mailed to your chambers. Well, you see, it's, it's rather urgent. I'd like to see them now, if I might. Well, look, I'll stretch a point. If you'd like to wait out there, I'll get my clerk to do it now. Thank you very much, sir. Right. I'll wait. Oh, Peter's coming, would you please? being kind to me because I'm in jail. I can't believe I'm here. Oh, please, darling, don't worry. You said you'd been working. Doing what? Well, I've been trying to establish that James Corby did know Vicky Drayton. I've been calling around at bars and restaurants in the vicinity of his studio. So far, without success. How long is it going to take? How, how long am I going to be here? Not a minute longer than I can help. John... Will I have to stand trial? Will I? Well, last night I had a wild idea that perhaps you wouldn't. Today I begin to see things more clearly. I'm afraid we've got to start preparing a case to present in court. I saw Clayton this morning. He said that I was behaving like a layman. Of course, he's quite right. I'm a lawyer and I've got to act like one. You've got to help me. Oh, what can I do? I want you to tell me the whole story again. Concentrate on everything you saw and heard. I saw the murder committed. I saw Yes, Corby. I know, but I... I need something more concrete than that. Darling. How can anything be more concrete than that? Well, start at the beginning. Try to remember each detail. Try to remember? Nothing else but remember what happened that day. Cooped up here, I can't shut it out of my mind. I keep seeing Corp. That look on his face. I keep seeing that girl slowly sliding down to die, clutching the door. That 
green ring on her finger. The sound of Gorby's foot. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What did you say about a ring? You saw a green ring on Vicky Drayton's finger? Yes. Are you sure? Yes, it was a... Absolutely it, sure? Absolutely sure. It, it was an emerald, a, a big green emerald. There was no ring of any kind found on Vicky Drayton's finger. Oh, there must have been. I saw it. Drayton showed me the papers. Among them were the police descriptions of the body and effects. I must have read through them a dozen times, but there was no ring. There must be a mistake of some kind. Unless... Yes. Yeah. John. What? Do you remember I told you that... Corby bent over the body for a moment. Yes. I, I couldn't see what he was yes, doing. Yes, he must have been removing the ring. That's it. Oh, I don't see how that's important. Now, yet, why would Corby run the risk of stopping to remove a ring when he... Well, I... Wait a minute. He probably bought that ring for Vicky Drayton. And it could be traced to him. Of course. That would establish that he knew her well. But he knew her very well. Men don't go around buying emeralds for strangers. Oh, what's the use? He's probably got rid of it by now. Yes, but don't you see it's the only real lead I've had so far. I mean, suppose, suppose that Vicky went with him to buy it. Well, she'd have to dry it on. Yes, well, there must be a jeweler somewhere to remember seeing them together. But which jeweler? That's what I'd like to find out. How? I don't know. Well, there's something else. About lunchtime, I was standing outside Corby's studio. What for? Well, I was going in to see him, and I was trying to decide which approach to take. When he came out with a young woman, his model, I imagine. Could it have been the model who established his alibi? I don't know, but she's the person I'm going to talk to. Well, how can you get her name, her address? Well, it was in the papers that Clayton gave me. I've got to go now, darling. I'll, I'll see you soon. Miss Jensen? Yes? I'm John Miller. You've read about my wife, I suppose. Well, yes. Why have you come to see me? Would you mind if I came inside for a few moments? Come in. Thank you. Do sit down, Mr. Miller. Well, I'll come straight to the point, Miss Jensen. You told the police that you were with James Corby at the time Vicky Drayton was murdered. That's right. Were you? I told the police, and that's the way it was. But don't you start questioning me about it. I'm a lawyer, Miss Jensen. I want you to know that perjury is a serious offence. If you told them that, and it wasn't true, it could land you in jail. Now, look, Mr. Miller, you've no right to doubt my word, and if that's what you came about, I think you'd better leave. I'm sorry, Miss Jensen. But you see, my wife did not murder Vicky Drayton, and I'm trying to prove her innocence. Well, that's your problem. You stick to your affairs, now stick to mine. Yes, I know, but your affairs seem rather involved with mine. That's not the way I see it. Miss Jensen, would you want an innocent person convicted of murder? No, I wouldn't. But I'm not the jury. Very well, then. Now, perhaps you'll tell me how long you've worked for James Corby. A few months, if that'll help you any. Well, it might do. Do you know if James Corby knew Vicky Drayton? No, he did not. You're quite sure of that? said so, and that's good enough for me. I think he did. Well, look, Mr. Miller, I'm very busy. I think you'd better leave. Sorry to have troubled you. Don't come back here again. Let's hope I can avoid it. But how can you be certain this is the same ring that Vicky Drayton wore? Well, I'm going to show it to Janet, and if she says it is, then I'll comb every jeweler's shop in London, if necessary. That'll take you months. Well, then I must narrow it down to the jewelry shops in the vicinity of Corby's studio and Charlton House. But Miss Drayton may have bought this ring herself. Oh, I doubt that, Brown. Well, she may have got it from a boyfriend, any boyfriend. Not necessarily Corby. I think Corby removed it from Vicky Drayton's finger. And then he gave it to this model friend of his in return for an alibi. Then she's in trouble. Mm-hmm. She's going to find that out soon enough. But you're in trouble too, John, for taking this ring. Well, if it'll establish Janet's innocence, it'll be worth it. Look, hmm? Miss Jensen will miss this ring. 
She may connect his disappearance with you and go straight to the police. In that case, you're not available to establish Janet's innocence. Well, the worst thing that can happen to me is that I could get out on bail. And what about the publicity? I'd welcome it. I'd like this ring and all its details made public. It would help our case immeasurably. Hmm, I'm worried about you, John. I'm afraid that sooner or later you may force a showdown with Corby. Well, Brown, save your worries for Janet. Yes, but her freedom seems to depend upon you. What's this for? You've got an all-night job ahead of you. I want to make a list of all the jewelry shops in the vicinity of Corby's studio and Charlton House. Do you want to help? You know I do. Good. Yes, sir. Oh, excuse me. This must be the tenth jewelry shop I've been in today. I wonder if you could help me. I'll try, sir. Well, you see, my wife borrowed a ring from a friend of hers for a dinner party. I'm just on my way to return it. Well, she, she took rather a fancy to this ring, and I'd like to get her one similar for our anniversary. Uh, you bought the ring here, sir? Well, no. No, that's the difficult part. You see, uh, my wife's friend received it from a gentleman. Naturally, I don't want to ask any embarrassing questions. He lives in the neighborhood. So I've been going around all the local jewelry shops. Well, I'll certainly do my best to help you, sir. Uh, you have the ring with you? Yes, I have. Um, um, it's, as you see, a dress ring with a large emerald in it. But I know this ring well. Oh, do you? I sold this to a Mr. Corby. You said it, I've just been reading about Mr. Corby. You do mean Mr. Corby? Yes, uh, Mr. Corby is the man. Hmm? Well, I sold it to him about all three months ago. Oh, well, tell me, uh, did Mr. Corby or did the young lady select the ring? I mean, it's in such good taste. Uh, Mr. Corby bought it himself. I've never seen the party he gave it to. I remember it very well. Ring, necklace and bracelet to match. Oh, such a nice gentleman. Must be terribly exciting for him, helping the police the way he is. Uh, matching necklace. Did you say uh, necklace? That's quite correct, sir. Yes, Mr. Corby had us make them up to his own design. Oh, and a jolly nice design. So, Mr. Corby bought a matching necklace at the same time as the ring? Yes, I've been trying to explain to you, sir. To his own design? Yes, sir. Now, what about this ring, sir? We could make one up for you, I think, two to three weeks, if that would be all right. Thanks. Thanks a lot. But I say, sir, what about the ring? Brian Witt speaking. Hello, Brian. Listen, I've had a bit of luck. I've managed to locate the jeweler. Corby knew Vicky Drayton, all right. He not only brought her a bracelet and ring to match, but a necklace as well. Well, that is good news. What are you going to do now? See Inspector Martin? Oh, no, no, I don't do that. You see, I came by the ring in a rather unorthodox fashion. How about seeing Clayton? No, no. I'd run into trouble there, too. Now, I've got to handle this in my own way. What are you going to do? Well, I'm going to... I'll ring you later, Brian. Hello, sweetie. I was worried about you. You're late. I overslept. What's wrong with you? Plenty. All right, let's have it. After I left the studio yesterday, Mr. Miller came to see me. What did he want? He wanted to explain to me what happens to a person who provides a false alibi. Oh? Why don't you tell him? I told him nothing. I practically threw him out. Now, what are you so worried about? Well, I just changed and put on my dressing gown when Miller arrived. I'd taken off my bracelet and the ring and put them on the table. Well? Well, you know, I had to meet Helen at six to go to her studio on that assignment. I snatched something to eat and dressed very quickly to be on time. Jewelry wasn't needed, so I didn't put mine on. Well, I'd get to the point. What happened? Right, take it easy. Well, I got home very late and I went straight to bed. This morning, I went to put on my bracelet and the ring. The ring was gone. Gone? Yes, gone. Jim, I think Miller took the ring. Don't be absurd. You must have lost it. It was there when he came in. No one else has been in the apartment. I met Helen downstairs. I'm sure he took it. Right under my nose. Well, why didn't you phone me last night? Oh, I told you I didn't miss it till this morning. Jim, I've got to call the police. 
You haven't yet. No, I wanted to tell you about it first. Leave it to me, sweetie. I'll find your ring. Oh, it's all very easy to say. How are you going to do it? Now, listen, Jim, sweetie. I think you should call the police. Please, sweetie, leave it. Don't give me that sweetie routine. I want the ring. I'm sick of the whole business. Miller told me that his wife did not murder Vicky Drayton and that you did know her. Oh, really? And who do you believe, Miller or me? I don't know. Don't you know that when a man is in the spot that Miller's in, he'll say and do anything? And why should he especially want the ring? It didn't by any chance belong to Vicky Drayton. Don't ever say that again. I bought it for you. Where did you buy it? What difference does it make? When did you buy it? Well, what's that got to do with when? it? When? I want to know when. I told you. Last week in return for providing me with an alibi. Now, will you stop questioning me? Jim, I don't want to be mixed up in anything criminal. Have you got a receipt for the ring? Of course I have at home. Well, I want to see it. I want to see it now. What's the rush? Jim, I refuse to go on with this until I've seen the receipt for the ring and the date you bought it. The, the date I bought it? I get it. You stay right here until I come back. my wife stand trial for your crime. You're using the wrong tense, Miller. I am going to let her stand trial. You're a fool, Corby. You won't get away with this. You took the ring. Why didn't you get rid of this pawn ticket, too? Why should I redeem a dead woman's property? The only trace of that necklace is that scrap of paper. Nevertheless, this pawn ticket is going to hang you, Corby. You won't outsmart me again, Miller. I was lucky to find you here. And you won't get away with murder twice, won't I? We'll see about that. I did it once. I'll find an alibi for this, too. <laughs> Well, we picked up the necklace from the pawnbrokers and took it to the jewellers. He identified it straight away as having been specially made for Mr. James Corby. We'll have no trouble at all in getting a conviction. You know, Mrs. Miller... Uh, Are you trying to apologize, Inspector? Well, I really owe it to you both, you know. Still, we all make mistakes. Good luck. Thank you. Goodbye, sir. Thank you, Inspector. Bye-bye, Sergeant. Goodbye, sir. Oh, by the way, Inspector, if James Corby should ask you to recommend a lawyer, uh, don't mention my name. <laughs> no, I won't. <laughs> 